FBI, publication funded by the European Commission under the Erasmus Plus program. This publication has been produced with the financial assistance of the European Commission. The publication reflects the views only of the authors, and the European Commission and the Erasmus Plus National Agency are not responsible for its content. The publication is available under the Creative Commons license. Publication free of charge. Hello everyone, this is the Assistant Professor Dr. Bucininov from Olan University. Hope everyone is doing fine. As all of you know, this webinar is a part of our project entitled uh, Active Woman. Uh, and it is made by the leadership of Edo Expert from Poland. This webinar uh, will be about communication and conflict resolution in a remote working model. So. Uh, the project is dedicated to women who, due to COVID-19 pandemic, cannot freely return to the labor market and want to remove again the, regain the possibility of active participation in society in order to prevent social and digital exclusion. And as you would agree, remote work is the best way to solve the problem of unemployment in small regions. We'll be, we will be talking about communication and conflict resolution in a remote working model, and it will be taking four to five minutes long, approximately. So the training program includes uh, common communication knowledge and terminology, test-based and relational model of communication, communication in difficult and conflict situations. So if we start from the uh, basis we, we can talk about communication a little bit. So, um, we can say that communication is uh, not only the words that we are talking about. In the broadest sense, every human behavior constitutes a message in relation with another person. Even the absence of a message carries some information. To better understand of uh, our own communication, it will be useful to look at those elements by which others receive information from us. And also it is important to know that communication is an irreversible process. We cannot take the words back. We cannot take our behaviors back. So every behavior is a message. Uh, communication is multifaceted. While you are talking about something, the, the recipient of the message can understand something else. Words are objective, but giving meaning to word is subjective. That's why we have to be careful while we are uh, conducting our messages. So uh, communication can be divided into verbal and nonverbal. Verbal communication is used to exchange information and it's the basis for performing tasks, while nonverbal communication is responsible for interpersonal relations and it's most often the source of conflicts and dis dis disputes between people. It is worth looking at the contribution of the different types of communication to the reception of information from another person in interpersonal relationships. It would seem that verbal communication is the main source of information, and this is indeed the case of really uh, when we focused on completing tasks at work, for example. However, the aspect of a relationship between two people, um, the source of information is primarily the nonverbal communication, as you can see from the uh, models. So there are behaviors, facial expressions, gaze, uh, prosodic and uh, paralinguistic measures, gestures, body posture, touch, uh, special behavior, makeup, clothing, even everything we have on uh, carrying on our bodies. The share of verbal communication in building interpersonal relationships. It's small, all about um, at about seven percent. The remaining ninety-three of information about the relations of people to each other and to the world is gained through the reception of these sent nonverbal messages. One can use the analogy of an iceberg, as you can see in the picture. Only a small small part of which uh, 
protrudes above sea level. What is articulated and heard constitutes only the tip of the iceberg. That's why we have to be careful while we are communicating uh, um, to our words and uh, more importantly with our bodies and the movements that we have. The hallmark of uh, nonverbal communication it is integrity at the level of many groups of messages. For example, when a person distances himself, he often expresses it by tightening his body back, not smiling, avoiding eye contact, limited uh, gesticulation, and stuff like that. If you're sitting like this and staring at the person that is talking with a, let's say, serious face, Maybe it can mean to the person that you're talking to, you're not interested or you're not agree with him and blah, blah. So there will be lots of messages going on between uh, two people within the interpersonal communication. So the consistency between the spoken word and body language is also important. Therefore, when there is a, a discrepancy between what is said and body communication, we subconsciously believe that message comes from the body rather than the words. So the person uh, who is receiving the messages will be understanding the body language, not the words. That's why it's uh, much more important from the verbal communication. This basic knowledge of communication tell us in the context of uh, what uh, what does it tell us in the context of remote work? We can say that uh, keeping in mind the facts that uh, we are talking about, it can be seen that remote work severely limits the exchange of nonverbal communication, uh, which is largely responsible for creating relations in a team. So while working remotely, we have far less information about other people's attitude toward us. We do not build closer relationships. We cannot check the consistency of nonverbal messages. For example, when we hear uh, the irritation in the voice of the person we are talking to, and we don't know the whole context, we cannot tell whether the state of irritation appeared in connection with our words or it's caused by some event, like a dog is barking, a child is screaming, and stuff like that. We cannot check the consistency between the spoken word and the communication coming from the body. Therefore, when working remotely, there may be barriers due to specific communication, such as lower level of cooperation, like other employees are not important to me, so I will not support them. And there will be distance. So um, as a uh, remote working person, I do not have information about my informal position in the group, the quality of the relationship I have with others. I do not trust other team members, maybe. So there will be prejudices like, uh, behavior, tone of voice, they can uh, create prejudices and it's difficult to revise one's judgments. And there can be long suppressed conflicts like the lack of direct relations limit the ongoing resolution of small disagreements which can reach a significant uh, size after time. So I will give you some tips for developing a communication competence. What can you do to make communication and a team working re remotely effective uh, is the question, and there are some answers for that. First of all, you should be aware that relationships built with remote uh, tools bring us fewer messages than a line meeting. Second, uh, we should take care uh, of the precision of verbal statements. Third, we should use paraphrasing and active listening. I will give some more uh, examples about those. And we should talk about the relationships, ask about intentions, because if we try to read the intention of the other person, we may mistake, uh, we can make some mistakes. It's important to have supportive relationships, building communication knowledge and skills, taking into account uh, the various factors affecting processes. <clears throat> so it can be a good idea to present your evaluation of the other person by asking yourself a few questions from the level of metacommunication, which we will be talking about. Questions such as what, who, when, how, where will be helpful, 
answer. For example, what did she say? Is what she said uh, verifiable? For example, who is responsible for this job? For example, where can I verify the knowledge? And how was it done? When was the work done? Something like that. So knowledge of communication and how to resolve conflicts is crucial in teamwork. Communication can be disrupted at three levels, each of which will generate conflicts and different intensity. The communication process always involves two people, the sender and the receiver, who exchange roles during the conversation. Let me change. Yep. So as the sender, we have a purpose. Uh, and then the process within the process, we need to code the message that we would like to uh, pass to the other person. We can do it by words, we can do it by signals, we can do it by our body posture and stuff like that. And then the other part of it is verbalization. So which words should I use to convey my, my message to the recipient? And the recipient receipts uh, of the first of all, physically receive the content and he decodes or she decodes it in her brain, uh, which is the process of meta program realized. And there will be some thoughts about it. So let's talk about meta programming uh, in detail. Just a second. I'm checking the materials that you should have. So meta programming is about filters. In the communication act, each person processes the message according to their own filter because all of we have different backgrounds, different education levels, different families, different cultures. So it depends on our experience, personality, temperament, emotionality, beliefs, attitude, etc. The best known metaprograms affecting the perception of reality are pessimism and optimism, trust in people and distrust, restraint and impulsiveness, openness to change and conservativeness. As uh, you can check the diagram, you can see some arrows which are defining those uh, ways of understanding. Sometimes the act of communication between two people with extreme metaprograms causes strong distortions in interactions. So for good communication, it is worth knowing your own color and understanding the colors of others. By colors, I mean the colors on the diagram. So as you can see, we have blue color, red color, green color, and yellow color, which um, are referring to the different uh, filters that of understanding. First one is task oriented and introverted, and the other one is uh, red one is task oriented and extrovert. Green one is relationship oriented uh, at work and it's introverted, and the yellow one is relationship oriented and extroverted. So. Uh, in the materials you have, you will find a test to determine your way of doing things based on your color test. So I would uh, recommend you to do the test and you will see your communication um, behaviors and understanding that it will be very beneficial for you to understand your attitudes and the way of communication. I will give uh, some more information about the diagram. After you do the test, you will be understanding what kind of uh, specialties you will have. So blue, green, red, yellow react differently in similar or same situations. Understanding the communication interpretation program allows you to adjust the communication to the recipient and objectify the message, which helps in preventing and resolving conflicts. 
If you are a red person, uh, you are a dominant energetic who likes to have everything under control. And the characteristics will be full of enthusiasm, lively, energetic, ambitions, endowed with a strong will, aware of the goal and achieving goals, focused on solving the problem, uh, on action and results determined, creative, impatient, impatient control, uh, we can say control freak, charismatic, showing initiative, liking high pace, stubborn, straightforward and independent. Of course, there will be some weaknesses uh, by, I mean, if you have that color and weaknesses would be uh, irritated quickly, takes a split second. Uh, this person type is unpredictable and gets irritated when someone slows down the goal and can dominate, tends to autocracy. Others may avoid uh, red people due to their strong anger response and explosivity um, and red boss uh, will have some difficult conversation with the workers so it will tend to quick transfer of information from the position of an autocrat and they will be quickly irritated when asked for explanations and uh, they can arouse strong emotions on the fear revenge uh, scale um, yeah, so uh, red worker during a difficult conversation will tend to strong confrontation, uh, standing uh, their ground and taking control, termination of the conversation or employment relationship, and it will be, it can cause a riot. They can cause riot. And yeah, there are some challenges. It was a detailed explanation of the red person type, but we will be keeping the other ones simple. You can check the materials you have if you want to know more about the uh, characteristic types. So uh, yellow person is inspiring, optimistic, caring for a good atmosphere, believing in uh, good end endings. So the characteristics will be talkative, enthusiastic, persuasive, creative, optimistic, outgoing, spontaneous, Charming, enjoying life, self-centered, sensitive, and uh, there will be also weaknesses like downplaying the problems, too much trusting in others, focusing on good relationships. They don't let bad information get to them. They don't want to see the problems sometimes, and they block them. And uh, doesn't tolerate people who sabotage a good atmosphere, so the relationships are much more important for them. They focus on enthusiasm rather than tasks, uh, and they quickly abandon things they, that require effort and can spoil a good atmosphere in a team. So yellow uh, bosses, um, if they have a difficult conversation, they will tend to gently convey difficult information and care for a good atmosphere, not for uh, change. And they can end the conversations quickly so as not to spoil your mood without finishing the, the, the things that needs to be uh, told. And as the workers, uh, yellow type, uh, when they have difficult conversation, they will tend to downplay, downplay the problem. Uh, they can promise that the change will be implemented immediately, which is not realistic. And also they can turn into a joke to ease the tension and get back to a good atmosphere. And they can uh, try to appeal to good relations. And the green person we have, they are stable, balanced, uh, secretive, and impenetrable. So the characteristics would be patience, self-control, trustworthy, loyalty, modesty, understanding, accuracy, uh, discretion, hiding emotions, friendly, caring, able to listen, helpful, focused on implementation. So uh, what are the weaknesses? If we check, they are too tolerant. They don't want to offend anymore, anyone. Um, they tend to keep their opinions to themselves. They don't show their emotions, uh, which can cause others to move away, away from them because they don't want, uh, they, know, they don't know what to expect from them. They can hold grudges for a long time. So 
As a boss, the green type will tend to await such conversations and there will, there, therefore will delegate tasks to others who do a good job and have a good relationship with them. So they will be sharing the tasks according to the relationships with, with, between people. Um, they will have a lack of firmness which can cause others in the team to get mad at injustice. And they will be assuming the role of a listener, which may lead to the employee manipulating such a boss. And they will be counting in handling over tests. If you're a worker and you're green, uh, you will tend to close and over experience. And you will tend to focus on the fact that good relationships have ended. And uh, if you're in a dif difficult conversation, by the way, it's not for general. And you will tend not to understand what the conversation was really about. So you will be closing yourself. And as the last one, we have the blue person type. Generally, if we check the keywords for that person type, we can see analytical restraint, fond of law and our order, procedural. So the characteristics will be conventional, structured, objective, perfectionist, methodological, thought responsible, quality oriented, methodological, investigating, time consuming, analytical, systematic, uncertain. We can just try to uh, put more words into it. So uh, they were they demand too much uh, from themselves. The weaknesses would be tend to uh, follow procedures. Uh, one solution that she processes herself rigidly adheres to the rules, uh, and they are so absorbed uh, in work that they often do not notice others. So they're like uh, putting the work glasses and don't see anyone else. Uh, the blue boss will, be, in a difficult conversation, will tend to refer the paragraphs. Um, they will have long distances. They will have detailed analysis. They will be perfectionist. And in a difficult uh, conversation, a blue worker will tend to analyze allegations on various levels. They will not reveal the emotions. Uh, and they will tend to failure to respond to allegations and expectations. I think that would be enough for characteristic types. So uh, you can do the exercise from that link. Please copy the link and do the exercise after the lecture. And you can do your analysis. And you can try to understand your communication skills while working remotely. And we have some uh, principles of inter uh, interpersonal communication. And I will be giving some practical tips for developing communication competence. What you can do to make communication in a team working remotely effective is the question. So for that question, first, you should be aware that relationships built with remote tools bring us favorable messages than a live meeting, as we already done. We need to take care of the precision of verbal statements. We should use paraphrasing and active listening. For example, what you mean blah, blah, blah? So you're saying blah, blah, blah. We need to understand the messages uh, clearly understood between two people. Uh, we should ask about intentions again. So awareness is very important while we are building these relationships. So um, it can be said that this is the simplest system of orientation in reality. It is often based on a very simplistic model of evolution in relation to our, ourselves. Uh, people received as similar to ourselves are more easily accepted and positive relations are, relationships are built with them more quickly. So when you're feeling that that person is like you, you will be building uh, 
more fruity relationships with them. In the case of people uh, similar to ourselves, we often believe that success depends on their personality traits and failures depend on external situations. Conversely, in the case of people who are not like ourselves, success is attributed to the external situation and failures to personal traits, but it's not related, as we can say. Uh, so you should be aware that what kind of personality trait you like and dislike. That's your personal thought about people and it doesn't affect the success uh, while doing work. So you need to clear those. Awareness of what type of person behavior is close to me and what type is distant can help realistically evaluate the work of others, their involvement, and not to uh, succumb the mechanism des uh, described before of linking the characteristics of people and the situation uh, to failure and success. Awareness can be expanded by familiarizing oneself with the eight part systematization of interpersonal behavior, according to the Theodore Nipcom. So the author describes, based on his research, eight human behaviors that elicit specific fixed reactions in other people. He described these behaviors on two axes, submissiveness, domination and hostility, law, indicating that a specific behavior always somehow automatically triggers a specific reaction. And yes. You can check the levels of communication here also. Uh, before uh, coming to that chart, we should say that meta communication allows you to make cool assessments based on facts, rather than your, your own subjective beliefs. We should be uh, be aware of opinions and facts at the same time. For example, in uh, consciously building relationship with others, it's all important to distinguish the facts from one's own belief and judgment. An opinion is not a fact. Facts are statements that can be objectively verified. While whenever there is an element of evaluation, a subjective perception, we are dealing with an opinion. In relationships, especially when making assessments, it's important to determine whether we are reaching for facts or opinions. Art. The opinion should be, ex if you're talking about your opinion, it should be expressed in a form of indicating that uh, it is our, our own opinion. Like, in my opinion, I believe that, and stop, it's words like that. All right. We already talked about uh, paraphrasing and we will finish that part. If we follow the principles of uh, good communication, you will be uh, getting to know yourself better, you will be paying attention to the little things, uh, you will remember about the instability of uh, interlocutors' attention, uh, we will not formulate prejudgments, and we will be ready to admit a mistake, so mistakes can happen, and um, good communication is based on honesty, so it is worth admitting a mistake. It has to be relationships based on facts. You need to pay attention to the meaning and not the form of the partner's statements, uh, because very often we do not like the communication style of another person. And this means that by rejecting or worse assessing the style of expression, we also evaluate the statement itself badly. We should take into account of the feelings of the other party. Feelings are a part of it. Uh, we do not underestimate any question. We don't be afraid of disagreement because we need to discuss the things 
uh, that needs to be done or that needs to be find a way, find a solution and stuff like that. And we will try to take the other side's point of view. We will express disagreement, criticism in a constructive way. We will be avoiding giving advices. And giving advice often shows that we are not listening to the other person. We are imposing our vision. It, sh it should be remembered that when someone implements uh, our advice, if they fail, they will tend to shift responsibility to you. We would speak clearly and to the point, check if you're understood or not. So, let's come to that uh, diagram. It is called also the foresight model of communication. And levels of communication. <clears throat> the model says that every message has four facts. And through not the same emphasis might be put on each. So a message through a communication can therefore be sent as well as, as, well as received as one of the four sides of information. So while we are um, building our messages, we use four different uh, perceptions and it is received by four different perceptions. So this model has two personas and a couple of elements. The sender is the person delivering a message and the receiver Excuse me. Yes, seconds. And the receiver is the person receiving a message, like the listener. Uh, there will be message that is being said, the actual spoken word or written words or whatever tool we are using, and there will be four sides of the messages. First will be the uh, information, the factual information, as you can see in the uh, bottom right. The, it's the objective matter of fact information like data and the facts. And there will be the appeal, appeal desire, advice, uh, instructions, commands that the sender is seeking. And there will be relationships, uh, which is the information on the relationship between sender and receiver. How do they get along? If they get along, what do, do they think of each other and stuff like that. And self-presentation. Self-presentation stands for implicit information about the sender and his motives, values, emotions, likes, and dislikes. So metaphorically, when you're the sender, your main intent is spoken through one of four weeks. As the receiver, you are listening through one of four years. Uh, if we would uh, give an example, uh, imagine that two people are eating a home-cooked meal together, that one who didn't cook says, there's something going in my soup. So, if uh, we try to break down what kind of filters we have. We can say that factual information filter, uh, the sender's potential intention would be there is something green in my soup. The factual information is that. The appeal layer, we can understand that, tell me what it is. If you're saying that there's something green in my soup, you may be potentially asking that, what is it? And the relationship layer, we can read it like you should know what it is, and stuff revealing layer would be I don't like green in my soup. So uh, we can take out different meanings from one sentence. The receiver's uh, the perception perception perceived intent through analysis would be there is something green according to factual information. The appeal layer would be seen like, I should only cook what you know in the future. It's a, uh, how can I say? It's like reading the intention of the other and uh, giving the answer according to that. So relationship layer, you think my cooking is questionable? Stop uh, revealing real can be read 
like you don't know what the green item and that makes you feel uncomfortable it's a question because of the perceived information of the message the receiver might ask for if you don't like the taste you can cook it yourself so the message is misunderstood and there is a conflict between two people so this soup example shows how the sender and receiver have uh, championed that art of misunderstanding. It also shows the huge potential of misunderstanding each other. So there are two truths. The sender has an intention that is usually hidden implicit in the message. The intention is the sender's truth. Second truth is the receiver analyzes the information heard by matching it against his beliefs, values, as well as experiences, and his perception of what he heard becomes the receiver's truth. So there are different two truths. You should be keeping in mind that uh, the receiver can understand, understand your message in another way within uh, using different four filters. I think it will be clear. So let's skip to the manipulation part. If you started a conflict resolution conversation and left feeling guilty and defeated or upset, then a psychological game has started and you have bought and played it. The purpose of manipulation is, is to shrug off responsibility and not to make a change and the purpose of talks resolving conflict situations is to introduce change, establish rules and diagnose the situation. There are uh, four different manipulation techniques. First one is seduction. Uh, here we have the great first impression. They will speak your language, they will focus on you and your qualities, and they will say what you want to hear, and they will have the same opinion as you. The second manipulation technique, if someone is using it, uh, he, he or she will make uh, himself a victim. Uh, they will arouse pity, and they will refer to their intentions, and they will reduce the conversation to intentions and not tasks. To be sold, and they will arouse a sense of guilt or harm. In the workplace, the third manipulation technique is bullying. They will threaten, often on the verge of arousing fear and submission, not actions. They will say that they will discuss and explain it in a moment, but the way they want to do it raises objections in you, and you see a lot of negative consequences instead of solutions. And the fourth one is blaming, of course. They will direct the attention to others, blame others, arouse guilt, and lower the uh, interlocutor's or the sender's self-esteem. You should be aware of that to, to fight with the manipulation techniques. And we have Suko method. What it is? Here, F stands for uh, the facts. Good feedback is based on facts. Facts are usually indisputable and thus form a good base of your message. They will also help you to stick to rational arguments during discussion. Opposite to that would be basing feedback on your options and judgments. Opinions are definition subject, are by uh, definition subjective. Moreover, your interlocutor can perceive them as unjust, harmful, or even aggressive. That, in turn, might spring an argument, and that is something we want to avoid. For example, of an opinion. You are not respective, uh, respectful of our meeting schedule. And if you're talking about facts, an example of a fact would be like, you were late to our daily stand-up three times this week. So being late for a meeting is a fact. But if you're saying to the person, you are not respectful of our meeting schedule, you're talking about the opinions, your own opinions about the other person. Uh, by, 
at the same time you should be avoiding generalization uh, of course like you're always late but the fact would be you were late three times this week so when you're saying the the exact uh, realities it would sound different and here at the Foucault method U stands for emotions in this part, you might want to let the receiver know what kind of emotions that situation brought up to you. I mean, emotions are important too, because it will bring the human aspect to the discussion and it will help the other person realize what impact their behavior had on you. Also, in certain situations, it will allow them to understand you reacted the way you, why you reacted the way you did. Uh, if we will give an example of expressing your emotions, you can say that that made me frustrated. I became angry as a result. I was sad after what happened. You can use that word. Here, we also want to restrain, restrain our opinions to the other person's motives. It is easy to disguise our judgments as an expression of emotions. For example, I felt like you disrespected me or I felt like you ignored my needs. A good rule of thumb is to avoid you communicate here and stick purely to the I communicates. So use the I language, don't use you language. A here at the Foucault method stands for consequences. Here we want to inform the other person about the possible consequences might be in the case the situation repeats itself in the future. Because people are much more inclined to introduce changes if they understand potential consequences of not doing so. This can boost the chances of them changing their behavior if similar similar thing should occur. As an example, you can say that if you keep being late, it might contribute to us missing our deadline. If you keep shouting at the meetings, it will be forced to report that you. To, uh, to your supervisor or if you keep doing that it will eventually uh, eliminate me from the team and the third uh, principle of the Foucault method here O stands for expectations so we explained which situation uh, we refer to we mentioned which emotions it brought up to us and what kind of consequences it would have in uh, case it repeats itself. If we have specific expectations towards the other person, uh, this is time to express them. Now, we cannot force the other person to fulfill our expectations, so we should not express them as demand. It is better to express them as a request. It is possible that... Um, we will have any specific expectations. Maybe, for example, we are just giving feedback to make the other person realize what results are, uh, results their actions have on the work environment. In such case, we might just say something like, I just wanted you to know that. So you can take that into consideration in the future. You can use that word. So, uh, we have checked the Foucault method and you can see the table here which uh, part of the Foucault method stands for what so that's the end of our lecture and as a summary while working remotely we have far less information about other people's attitudes towards us and we cannot check the consistency of nonverbal messages when we hear irritation in voice of the person we are talking to on the phone and we cannot see whole context. We don't know if the state of irritation has arisen because of our words or perhaps because there's a child or dog here uh, just distracting. And we cannot check the consistency between the spoken word and the communication coming from the body. And if you want to make the communication effective in a remote working environment, 
we should be aware that relationships built through remote tools give us fewer messages than the meeting in real life. We need to ensure the accuracy of verbal statements. We need to use paraphrasing and active listening. We need to talk about relationships and ask about their intentions before just coming into the conclusions. I think that would be it. Thank you so much for listening.